Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with another interface review for you guys. So today we are looking at this guy, the M-Audio M-Track 2x2 C-Series USB Audio Interface. If you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around $100, if not less. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I'm recording in 24-bit 192 kilohertz with the Rode NT1 connected directly to the interface, and my gain is currently set at noon. I'm not going to do any post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. That's totally going to hit me. Oh, that was a close one. Big surprise, you do get the audio interface. You also get a USB-C to USB-C cable as well as a USB-C to USB-A cable and you get some documentation which includes a free Pro Tools first download as well as some free plugins. Then when we get to the build quality of this interface, it is actually one of the better feeling devices that I've reviewed so far. The top of this device is all plastic, but the sides are metal and it still feels pretty sturdy. The dials though are really what stand out to me. They have absolutely zero give to them whatsoever and I absolutely love them. Then the XLR port as well as all the other I.O. on this interface has no real give to them that's out of the ordinary. Now let's go ahead and walk through all the features and all the dials on this thing. On the top of the interface, you're going to find a gain dial for both input 1 and 2, and directly beneath that, you'll find the meters for those respective inputs. In the center of the interface, you're going to find a giant monitor dial to control the volume of the monitor outputs on the rear of the device. Next, you're going to find a mix dial, which allows you to mix between zero latency monitoring and computer playback. Next to that, you'll find the headphone volume control, which is pretty self-explanatory. Beneath those dials, you'll find a power light to indicate if the interface is plugged in and getting power. And lastly, you will find a light to let you know if the plus 48 volts is turned on or off. Then on the front of the interface, you'll find the high Z quarter inch input for your instrument. You'll find the plus 48 volts phantom power switch, which again feels absolutely amazing and I love it. And lastly, you'll find the quarter inch headphone jack, which as I mentioned, does allow for zero latency monitoring as well as computer playback. And then on the back of the interface, you'll find the USB-C port to connect it to your computer. You'll find a set of quarter inch monitor outputs to connect this to your powered monitors. And lastly, you'll find the XLR combo jack for either mic or line level input. Then as far as the specs, this thing has a bit depth of 24 bit, a sampling rate of up to 192 kilohertz, plus 48 volts of phantom power, a gain range of 55 decibels, and a preamp EIN of negative 128 dBU. Now let's go ahead and test the noise of this preamp, and in order to do that, I will be using a method that I learned from Julian Krauss, and I will link his video in the upper corner. Now in order to really tax this preamp, I have the Shure SM7B, which is a notoriously quiet microphone, connected directly to the interface, and I have my gain set at about 5 o'clock, which is almost completely maxed out, but yes, it can drive the SM7B, which has a sensitivity of around negative 59 decibels, and I will shut up so you can hear the background noise. Now let's go ahead and check the latency of this thing. 
Okay, now we're looking at the latency for the M Audio M Track 2x2 with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz and an IO buffer size of 64 samples. We have a round trip latency of 8 milliseconds or an output of 3.4 milliseconds. If we jump up to 128 samples, we have 10.5 milliseconds round trip or 4.7 milliseconds output. And if we jump up to 256 samples, 16 milliseconds round trip or 7.5 milliseconds output. And now with a sample rate of 192 kilohertz and an IO buffer size of 64 samples, we got a round trip latency of 6 milliseconds or 2.3 milliseconds output. Bump up to 128 samples, 6.6 .6 milliseconds round trip or 2.7 milliseconds output, and jump up to 256, 8 milliseconds round trip or 3.3 milliseconds output. Okay, now I have my Gibson Les Paul Studio connected direct to the M Audio M Track 2x2 in input 2, which is the Hi Z instrument input. I'll go ahead and record some audio and play it back just straight DI. And I'll also go ahead and add an amp simulator to show you how it can sound in a full mix. <laughs> So I'll just admit this up top. This interface kind of surprised me a bit. So in terms of pros, this thing does record in up to 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. You can also mix between zero latency monitoring as well as computer playback audio. It does have some form of metering on the face of the interface, which is a nice feature. It can also drive the SM7B relatively well without introducing too much preamp noise. It also did a pretty good job with latency in case you're recording music and need to be precise. It has a USB-C port and I point that out because I too agree that we should USB-C all things and lastly I love these dials so so much. They actually remind me of the dials on a classic Moog synth which just makes it so much fun to play around with them. But then in terms of cons, I have to get a bit nitpicky here, but the meters aren't very granular. It goes negative three, negative six, and negative 20. I would have loved to have seen two more positions there. Have it be negative three, negative six, negative 12, negative 18, and then make negative 20, negative 24. I think that that would just make the metering a lot more useful because there are plenty of people out there who choose to record at around negative 12 to negative 15 decibels. But now, would I recommend this interface? Yeah, I actually think it's a pretty nice interface with a really nice feature set, pretty decent preamps, and a really nice build quality and a bunch of knobs that are very fun to play with. Now, when you are looking at these entry-level interfaces, a lot of them are almost indistinguishable in sound. So it does really come down to the feature set, the build quality, and what you personally want sitting on your desk for years. Now, with that being said, the feature set and the sound of the M-Track 2x2 don't really set it apart from other entry-level audio interfaces. What do set it apart are the USB-C port, the dials, and this thing just looks a lot cooler than the other entry-level interfaces. All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos? You can watch them over there, or you can subscribe by clicking the logo beneath me. You can hang out in the Discord server. I'll throw a link in the description, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.